is Mrs. Ott, and I'm really happy that you are here to create something really cool today. Today we will be making painted paper, which is basically an abstract painting. And there are some illustrators and artists that use painted paper in their creations, which is what we're going to be doing. So the first step is to make a few different papers. And then next week, I'll come back with a different way to assemble them together in a collage. So I wanted to show you just um, an idea of how they can be used. For instance, this is an artist and illustrator that I'm pretty sure you know, Eric Carl. And all of his books are made with painted paper. So the artist who painted a blue horse, Eric Carl. And I'm going to show you just a few of the illustrations so you can see how he uses painted paper in his art. For materials, we will use tempera paint, which is a thicker paint than watercolor. And again, use whatever you have at home. I'm using, you know, all the colors, you know, the, the basic colors. And uh, but again, if you don't have that color, use whatever you have. And again, it doesn't have to be in the order that I, you know, apply colors. You can also create your own color, which is really exciting by mixing two colors together. So I want you to be super creative and have fun. So here is the book of uh, the artist who painted the blue horse. And I just want us to look at a few illustrations. So, for instance, when Eric Carl paints a horse, well, then again, you know, as an artist, you can paint an animal any color. It doesn't have to be realistic. But you can see all the different brush strokes and the different hues and values and different colors. I see a little bit of green and different shades of blue. So, and again, here, here is the texture. Here's the texture in, in, so, this is what we're going to be doing when we do painted paper. We take away some of the paint with creating different lines. So in here, the red crocodile would be different painted paper. The top part here, which has all these wiggly lines, started with a bottom that was pink. And then he applied a darker brown or red. So it's a layer, different layers. And then you can take away the paint with uh, the wiggly lines or different types of lines. Okay, again, here is a cow and a rabbit, even though we don't have pink rabbits. You know, as an artist, you can do them. And here, each part. Alright boys and girls, I'm ready to start my first uh, painted paper. We're going to be doing a few. I'm going to show you, so this one is an example to show you how we will layer colors and we will take away the color so that we can see texture. So in this case, my bottom layer, which is the first color that I'm going to put down, is a lighter color and it's pink. And then the second layer is purple. And the third layer is white. I'm also going to try to have two different sides on my paper so that when I use the paper for something else, I can use the same colors, but they look different. So I'm going to show you something like this in this example. I have all my colors here. This is makes me so happy when I see fresh colors, fresh paint that hasn't been used. So this is tempera paint and I'm going to take a big brush and I'm going to basically go over the whole paper, cover it completely, also on the sides with just pink. So I'm going to go back and forth and I'm going to go always in the same direction and make sure you go off your paper. I'm not taking any water. And I'm going to just cover, cover, cover the whole space. Now, you don't want to put too much 
um, paint because we will add a second layer on the top and ideally this one will not be as chunky if you could say as the second layer so this one will basically shine through um, under our next layer which will be a darker color so whenever you layer try to do your lightest color at the bottom first like we're doing right now and always try to go in the same direction and you really don't need to add any water so I'm almost done here I'm gonna go all the way to the end and also try to work on the surface that you don't mind getting paint on I'm also wearing an apron today whenever I do painted paper I wear an apron so I'm gonna go all the way when I'm done with my first layer I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to try to take away all the water it's always good to have a little rag around and I'm going to go to purple and I'm only going to do half of the page whoops sometimes it does uh, slide off and that's okay we can put it back so when I do my second layer I'm going to try to be very gentle so I want to paint just on the surface I don't want to blend it in with the pink so it's barely touching the surface just like that and I'm gonna add, save the other side to make it a little bit different so these papers are all about texture and they're super fun and it's good to experiment with different colors layering different combinations of colors and see what you get so here is my second layer and this is really fun so now i'm going to make it really nice and smooth and i'm going to put my brush back into the water tap 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 to get any extras and i'm going to get a paper towel to just put right here to take off the extra in a little bit i can leave it in the water now I'm going to take my texture tools. So the first one is a fork. This is a plastic fork that I find at home. And then you're gonna scratch lightly. You do not wanna break the paper. And now this, you have to do it while the paint is still wet. Really important. So they could be really pretty waves. So you decide what you do. You can do across if you'd like. just have fun and then on the other side here I'm going to take this is a toilet paper roll and I'm gonna dip it into first into purple because I want to have a little bit of purple sometimes you've got a bubble and that's really fun it might pop on your paper there it is and then you can just go around go back and you can decide if you want to overlap your circles So just creating different patterns just for fun and then maybe I want to have a different color with a different size so I'm gonna go actually or maybe I'll use the same one I'm gonna use the, the, the other side and this time I'm gonna go with white on to my purple first So right now I am at three colors and if I wanted to add one more you decide I think I'm done for now I'm going to show you a couple more it's always good to do a few because we will use them a lot next week in the project that we do next week so I am going to show you other options So for my next example, 
I did clean my water. I have uh, fresh water and a fresh piece of paper. And I'm going to start with yellow. So yellow will be my lighter's color. I'm going to go all over the paper. And then I'm going to add some orange as a second layer. And then perhaps a pop of blue for details. So I'm going to also use uh, something different for my textures. I think I'm going to use just the back of this brush and perhaps some smaller circles. So these ones will be, we will be done with, um, these are marker tops. When they don't work anymore, I always save them for texture projects like this one. So for our next example, I'm going to use a light blue and a dark blue. So light blue will be my first layer and then a dark blue and then I'll decide on a pop. So this one is going to be more like an ocean themed if we do something to do with the ocean next week. So I want to make sure I have some blues. So again, I'm going to layer the first one light blue and then continue whoops, with a darker blue on top. I'm going to work on my last uh, texture paper. And again, I'm going to look at the colors that I have here. And I have them laid out like the colors on the color wheel. So here are my warm colors. And then here are all my cool colors. So actually, this one should be here. So it goes from yellow to orange, to red, transitioning to pinks and purples, blues, turquoise, and green. So when you do painted paper, think about using colors that are next to each other. So in the first one that I showed you, I used pink and purple. The second one, I used um, yellow and orange. Third one, I used turquoise and dark blue. So the one I'm going to do right now is going to be like a blue, green, um, purple. So I am looking for a lighter green as my first layer. So I'm going to actually mix a special color right on my paper. And this is the most fun is to make your colors actually. So I'm going to take uh, some white and just go straight on the paper. You might not see it, but You'll see it in a little bit. So I'm going to add white all over the paper because I want a tint. The tint is a lighter color. So you add white and you get a tint. So I'm, I'm trying to achieve a really pretty light green. And you don't have to mix in a container, just mix on the paper. So you have to do it fast so that your white is still, you know, not dry. And of course I can go back and add a little bit on the paper. So you have, and the cool thing about that is that you'll have different shades of green throughout your paper. It's not one exactly the same. And that's what I like about this technique. It's basically called double loading. If you have two shades of colors on your brush, so mix right on your paper. A little bit more at the top right here. But we don't want it too light either. So it has to have a tint. It's not too light. Oh, that looks really pretty kind of a minty color. Think about what you would call your colors whenever you make colors. Okay. So now I'm gonna go and continue with my blue layer. And again, it's your choice to either do the whole page, full page, or maybe you do wanna keep a little bit of that mint color without having a layer. So I'm going to do my light blue, which is turquoise on top. And actually you could take a little bit of dark blue and light blue, 
which is what I'm going to experiment in just a minute. So this is all about experimentation.